Welcome back to Cutting It Close, a channel where we talk woodworking technology, a little bit of business, and make some cool projects. And today we're gonna talk about spiral upcut and downcut bits. And to explain it, I'm gonna use this piece of styrofoam and some pipe cleaners. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. So what's the difference between an upcut and a downcut bit? Well today, I brought this highly scientific model of a piece of styrofoam with some pipe cleaners I found in my craft drawer and I'm kind of going to explain it. So the, the piece of styrofoam represents a piece of wood or a material you're cutting and these pipe cleaners represent fibers of the wood or the very top and bottom surfaces of the material you're, you're cutting, okay? So an upcut bit, um, very simply, it cuts and ejects chips upwards, okay? So whenever you're cutting your material, what's gonna happen is it's cutting, it's spinning everything upwards, so it's gonna cut off these, so these are not gonna exist anymore. It's gonna cut these off, and then it's actually gonna bring all your fibers upwards like this. So you're gonna have a rough top side, and this is, these are not gonna be there, and you're gonna have a very clean bottom side, okay? Now a downcut bit, same kind of scenario, right? It's gonna send all your stuff downwards, okay? So what it's gonna do is gonna cleanly cut all of these off on your material, these are your fibers, and then it's going to actually leave a little bit rougher of a bottom side, but a clean top side, okay? And it's gonna have, you're gonna have, probably have a lot of chips in here, et cetera. So just as quickly as I, and quickly as practical as I can go, up cut, you're gonna have rough on the top, clean on the bottom. Down cut, you're gonna have clean on the top, and a little bit of frizzies and fibers on the bottom. Now we're gonna go over how to tell the difference between an upcut and a downcut bit. So both of these bits look very similar, but this one is actually an upcut and this one is a downcut. Now there's two ways to be able to tell this difference. There's the way I do it and then the way most people actually tell the difference. So the way I do it is that I spin the bit in the direction it's gonna go and the way the glare goes is the way the chips are gonna be evacuated from the um, material. And so I know if it's an upcut or not. So see this glare is going upwards as I spin it. So I know this one is an upcut. And on this one, if I spin it, see how that glare goes downwards, right? It's going downwards, so I know the chips are gonna be going down. And so I know this one is gonna be a down cut. So once again, this is how I tell personally, I spin it. And if the glare is going up, it's an upcut. And if this one is going down, it's a downcut. Now, how most people tell the difference, they look at right-handed and left-handed threads. So, like this one, see, it's going to the right. Once you hold it in the machine, right, it's going to the right. And so that's gonna be an upcut. A downcut has left-handed threads. So this bit is actually going to the left, right? And the blades are actually going upwards and to the left. So it's left-handed threads. So once again, right-handed threads are for upcut, and if the shininess is going up towards the spindle, away from the material, it's an upcut. A downcut bit has left-handed threads, and to me, the shininess is going towards the material, away from the spindle. So now we're moving on to upcut bits, and I'm gonna tell you the good and the bad about upcut bits. Now, you know, I actually prefer downcut bits um, whenever I'm doing stuff. I don't use upcut bits very often, but there is a lot of benefits to using upcut bits, okay? So upcut bits, once again, with my little diagram here, is gonna send all the chips upward. It's gonna leave you a clean bottom side, a rough top side, okay? It's gonna be great for plunging, um, because remember, it's evacuating the chips upward, so you can definitely plunge. You don't have to do a ramp. You can still do a ramp. I still recommend doing a ramping plunge, but you can just do a straight plunge if you want to with an upcut bit. Um, it's going to be great for uh, plastics and really every other material you're going to want to evacuate the chips upward because with like plastics or aluminum or you know hard plastics, acrylic, whatever, you're not going to have any fibers of the wood, right? You don't have any fibers in it. So it's actually going to leave a clean edge on both sides because there's no fibers. But when you're working with stuff with fibers like wood, that's when it gives you that rough edge, okay? Um, so once again, it's great for plunging. Um, you wanna use it also with thicker materials. So if your material's really thick, you're gonna to wanna to have to get those chips out of there. You can't really use a downcut bit, let's say with two inch thick materials, because that downcut bit is gonna have all those chips in there and uh, you, you don't want it cutting more and more chips. So you need that upcut bit to take all of those chips out of there. Now, what a upcut bit is bad for, 
Uh, one is doing like highly figured wood. So if you're using bird's eye maple, curly maple, um, maybe really um, hard woods, um, let's say like a, I don't know, a very, very dense wood. I don't want to name all these dense woods depending on where you're at in the world. Just, just a really dense wood. It's going to want to chip that wood out and, it, and, and it's going to want to mess up your really highly figured woods. And another thing that I don't like that a hobbyist uh, CNC guys are not going to like as well is that upcuts are going to pull away from the work table. Now, whenever that whenever that bit starts to pull up, right, because it, it's trying to evacuate the chips upward, it's grabbing your material and going upwards. So working with smaller pieces or working with a non-vacuum table, um, you better have a lot of hold down clamps for an upcut bit. Now, let's go on to a down cut bit. And, and I want to mention two things actually before I go on to the down cut bit is why I did not talk about straight bits or compression bits. Now, I didn't talk about straight bits because compression bits are far superior for a CNC because of the angle, right? That spiral flute has a certain angle that actually shears the wood a lot better than a straight bit does. When a straight bit does, it's, it's cutting across. That's like trying to cut, uh, let's say if you're eating a steak, right? Trying to cut down instead of actually slicing that steak, right? So that's why I didn't really go into straight bits. Now, compression bits, are, uh, you know, what they are is an upcut on the bottom side and a downcut on the top side of the bit. They look really cool, but for your smaller type CNC's, you're not going to be able to achieve the cutting depth and speed that you need to run that compression bit at. So I'm just sticking with upcuts and downcuts. Now, if you understand what an upcut and downcut can do, you combine the two, you kind of understand what a compression can do for you. So I'm not going to go into that area. Now, let's go into downcut bits. Now, what I like about downcut bits, I use, I've probably used a hundred different quarter inch downcut bits um, over the last couple years. I use them for everything. I love downcut bits. Um, it, you know, the con, the biggest downfall of a downcut bit is that it's going to leave, you know, as it shoots all this stuff downwards, right? it's going to leave all kind of chips right here in the trench or the cutting slot or whatever, right? And, and, it, and it's going to leave a lot of material right there. So whenever it does another pass, it's going to come back and that bit is going to have to recut all those chips, which could dole a bit quicker, which probably would dole the bit a little bit quicker, right? Because it's doing more cutting than it needs to do. But what I love about a downcut bit is that if you have a sacrificial board or a spoil board on the bottom, whenever that downcut bit comes around to cut out your part, it, these fibers that are supposed to be hanging down, right, because everything's pushing down, have that, that uh, board on the bottom, what it's going to do is actually cut off all those fibers because there's nowhere else for them to go. And so it really gives you actually a clean cut on the top and bottom side of your material. So with an upcut, you're never going to get that unless you have some kind of sacrificial board on the top, which you're probably not going to have, right? So that's why I love downcut bits the most. Now, the benefits of using the downcut is that it's going to hold your material to the work table. So if you're cutting out small pieces, you're going to want to use a downcut bit because while it's sending the chips downwards, it's going to want to hold your material down. Okay. Now, downcut bits are not very good for like veining or grooving because now you have this giant, let's say, vein or groove in your material that you're going to have to clean up. Um, as opposed to an upcut bit, it'll eject all those chips out of there. You're not going to want to use a downcut bit for um, plastics. Or in, and sorry about that, that's my air compressor in the background. But um, you're not going to want to use a downcut bit for plastics and stuff like that because what happens whenever those chips stay in that, that uh, cutting groove that you're doing, it's going to come back and sometimes it's going to reheat those, reheat those chips depending on what kind of plastic you have and those bits are not going to be able to get evacuated out of there so they're going to start gumming up on your, um, gumming up on your bit and bad things are going to happen. So downcut bits are not really good for hard plastic, soft plastics, aluminum, really anything else but for wood, they are fabulous. Now, upcut bits, once again, are good for the plastics and everything else, but for wood, I think, you know, a downcut bit is the way to go. Other benefits of downcut bits is that, you know, I like to use it for pocketing. So whenever you're pocketing out something, you're not cutting all the way through, so you're not having the fuzzy fibers on the bottom, and, um, you know, it just has a very clean pocket with a good top edge on it. So definitely use downcut bits for pocketing. Um, and uh, another, another little side note, about using a downcut bit, make sure you're using a ramp. You can't just go straight in with a straight plunge because the chips have nowhere to go. So make sure you're using a ramp plunge whenever you're using a downcut bit. 
And the last little side note between the difference between an up cut and a down cut is that a down cut, you typically want to run a little bit slower um, of an RPM because whenever that bit comes back by, or sorry, you're going to want to have to run a little bit faster of an RPM on a um, down cut bit because whenever it comes back and has to cut those chips again, that's actually adding a little bit of chip load to that bit. And what that does is now the bit has to cut a little bit more material than let's say an upcut bit because the chips are still in the trench. I hope that's making sense, right? So the chips are still in the trench, so that bit has to cut a little bit more wood um, than just what it's cutting because it still has to cut through the chips. So therefore you need to either slow down your feed rate or, feed, or speed up your RPMs. Now, I hope this kind of explained, it was, a, it was a kind of a quick guide, I hope it was practical, I hope I explained the differences of an up cut and a down cut bit using my scientific model, using some pipe cleaners, right? And I hope you kind of grasp a little bit more of like a, a, a practical guide to up cuts and down cut bits and I hope you are better off than when you started this video. So please leave the comments in the comment section below, give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks and remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.